At some stage, every golfer has experienced the pain of the shanks. My name is Jed Walters, I'm your PGA coach here at Your Golf Channel, and in today's lesson, we're gonna look at how, why we shank the golf ball, what we can do to stop it. Let's dive in. So what is a shank? Well, the shank is when the golf club and the golf ball meet each other here, or anywhere really around the hosel of the golf club. So generally we think of them as sort of heel strikes or right in the corner heel strikes shooting off at 45 degree angles. But we can also hit it here straight on the hosel and it just shoots forward low and left. I've even seen a few off the back here. I've even seen someone nutmeg themselves once with it coming right off the back here and just shooting straight between their legs. So anywhere around the hosel of the golf club is where we can shank it. So why do we shank it? Well, generally it's because the golf club is moving away from you. It's moving away from where it started in relation to your feet. So when we think about the golf ball being here, it's moving away from that point across here. So if I was to just set the golf ball there, if we look at the setup position, then relative to where my feet are there, we're shanking the golf ball because the golf club is moving this way. So the head is moving off its circle of movement. And as you can see, because that's happening, the hands are moving off their circle of movement and we're gonna get contacts around here. Now, contrary to belief, um, they don't just happen, they don't just appear. It's not like a lightning bolt from the sky. They are always there lurking in the background if you have them, okay? You can get away with it, you can hit some more centered shots, you can hit heel side of centered shots, but they're always lurking in the background. So, getting rid of the shanks is a fundamental change of hitting the center of the face against hitting heel side towards the hosel. So that's important to remember. So what's the root cause? Well, we've mentioned about the club moving further away from your feet. So when we're swinging the golf club around, if the hands move off the circle, so they move further away from your body, then the club head's gonna move further away from your body and we tend to get this contact. Now, it can happen in a couple of ways. It can happen because we're trying to hit from the inside too much, so we're coming this way and swinging the club too much in to out. It can happen when we're swinging over and across, so we get too much out to in. Um, generally, it can happen when we're trying to feel like we hit in straight lines. So then our golf club starts to get down behind the golf ball and straight too early. So if we can maintain the golf club's movement around its circle, maintaining the hands moving around the body on the circle, then generally we're gonna keep the ball away from the heel and more here in the middle of the club face. This is the bit that we're after, this is the bit that we're trying to avoid. And if you're shanking it, even try and getting this bit here is much more beneficial as you're moving forward. A key factor to bear in mind is that if we're not in the right place at our setup, it can lead to the shanks appearing. Uh, it can lead to you reaching out towards the golf ball if you are too far away from it, and it can lead you to try and pull the club back in to make contact if you get too close. So making sure we get in the right position to set up can be really crucial. So if I put this alignment stick down, what we really want to try and do is feel that the body's pressure is more across the laces of the shoe, not too much sort of ball to toe, not too much into the heels. So if I stand on this alignment stick and I've got it pretty much underneath the arches of my feet, I'm trying to feel that both the heel and the ball of the foot is pushing down onto the floor at the same time with around the same amount of pressure. So I'm pretty much now over this portion through my feet. So if I go too much here, 
they can be too close, losing balance, I can go forward and I can find the hosel. If I'm too much here, reaching, then I can move dynamically again forward there. If I get too far away, I feel like I've got to get the golf club back towards the golf ball. And again, that's going to cause the hosel to possibly get in the way. So if we can get used to feeling like we are more across the middle of the foot at your setup, then from that point there, you're going to retain really nice balance throughout the swing and you're less likely to reach out or rock backward or forward and cause the club to move off its circle and bring the hosel into play. A final checkup at the setup position is to make sure that you are the right distance away from the end of the club. So we're thinking about not hitting the heel and the hosel, but the distance that we are from the end of the club, the butt of the grip, is really important. Because if we are here and we're too close and we haven't got the space, then it's very easy to have the club moving out and over. Um, if we're too far away, it's very easy to try and reach out and push the hosel in place. So what we want to do is make sure that the distance that we are away from the end of the club is, is in a position where if I was just to relax my trail arm and just let it hang, then I can put the hand straight back where it came from. If I'm too close, then as I do that, it's not in the same place, there's a gap there between the hands. If I'm too far away, then when I do that, the hands are gonna join. So making sure that when I allow my trail arm to hang, the hand can go back into the same place, gives me the right amount of space between the end of the club and the body. So now that we know what causes them, let's have a look at how we can start to manage them and ultimately get rid of them. So the first drill we can use is the constraint. So you can use a water bottle. I've just got my driver head cover here and I'm just gonna place it just there. So what we're looking at there is if I was to put the club head there, you can just see now that it will go past the end here if I hit the middle of the club face, but if I was to hit out of the hosel, I'm gonna hit the head cover. So I need to avoid hitting the head cover. I need to avoid coming in here and hitting my head cover. So that feeling from the setup position here is getting to the top of the backswing and making sure that it feels like your hands move down very close to your legs and that is going to keep the club head from moving too far over and it's going to help you get through avoiding the constraint and being able to find at least the middle of the golf club or even if you get towards the toe side that's also good it's getting used to that feeling that you're not moving your hands and club off their circles keeping them close in so they come back for that more centered strike the second thing we need to understand is that we want the club head to work out towards the golf ball not the hands, arms, or handle. So getting used to the feeling of the club head moving outwards towards the golf ball is really important. So if we look from this angle here, if we make a backswing, the feeling that if I was to just bring my hands and arms in really close, if I just move the club head outwards, you can see it's enough room, that's gonna reach the golf ball. You see how my hands are really close there. So by allowing the club head to move out towards the ball, keeping the hands inward and just letting the club move this way rather than trying to move the club head out towards the golf ball. Remember, that kind of movement happens because the, as a golfer, you think you've got to hit the golf ball. So you're trying to move the club to the ball rather than moving the club around the body and allowing the club head to just move out in towards the impact. So as a little drill to get used to that feeling, taking your setup, making your backswing, lowering the arms and then just turning the body and allowing the club head to move out to impact and just chipping that golf ball forward is gonna help you keep more centered with the strike and stop the club moving too much from the inside 
and also too much from the outside, so keeping the holes all out of play. One of my favorite anti-shank drills is the inside ball drill. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna get you used to moving the club instead of out towards the golf ball, keeping it closer to your body. As you can see here, I've got two balls down on the ground. And what we're gonna do in this drill is we are going to address the outside ball. And then we are gonna make a swing to the top and in the downswing, we are gonna deliver the club to hit the inside ball. So that's gonna get you the feeling that you have to stay closer with the hands and arms, turning the body to keep the holes out of play and hit the golf ball on the inside. It's a great way of getting the feeling of how you want to move the club around the body a little bit more, maintaining the hand path, and then in turn, maintaining the club on its path as well, so that you can get a lot more quality strike. Just enjoy this game a lot more. Hope you've enjoyed today's video, and I hope it's helped you understand a little bit more about the shanks and how you can prevent it happening moving forward. If you did enjoy the video, please post your comments in the box below. Love to hear your thoughts as always. Uh, click the little thumb, give the video a like, let YouTube know that you're enjoying the content so we can continue to create more of this content for you at your golf channel. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please click the subscribe button here below uh, and also the little bell notification so that you're notified every time we issue a new lesson here at your golf channel. And as always, thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you again in the next lesson.